Oh, hey. You know, artwork is supposed to be compelling and emotional. It's supposed to make you feel things, but sometimes it's just weird, creepy, or indescribable. Here are the 10 most controversial artworks of all time. Number 10 is Marcel Duchamp Fountain. Marcel Duchamp's fountain is technically a porcelain Bedfordshire model urinal, minus the plumbing of course, which is why it's considered one of the most iconic and controversial pieces of art in history. It was created in April of 1917 after he bought the urinal from a plumbing supplier in New York City. He brought it back to his studio, placed it wall side down, and signed it R. Mutt 1917. Fountain is considered to be one of his ready-made works, which were items that were built for practical use, but as an artist, Duchamp represented them as art. That year, Duchamp anonymously submitted the work along with the $6 fee to the Society of Independent Artists' first exhibition, who said that they'd accept any artwork. But they themselves caused just as much of an uproar as Fountain did when they refused it and called it not art. A series of replicas were made in 1964, but the original vanished before it was ever publicly shown. I can see how this is controversial. I mean, it's a urinal upside down. This is up there with people who, you know, have a white canvas and be like, there's the black dot, it's artwork, $10,000. Number nine are Gorilla Girls, do women have to be naked to get into the Met? Well, this one's a mouthful. The Gorilla Girls were formed in 1985 by seven women and are still made up of feminist activist artists who hide their identities by wearing gorilla masks, all while fighting racism and sexism in the art world. Because as we all know, there's no better way to be taken seriously than to play King Kong. Their very first protests were in response to an international survey of art put on by the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Only 13 of the 165 artists shown were women, and even fewer were artists of color. In 1989, they turned their protests into a poster campaign where they plastered all over New York asking, do women have to be naked to get into the Met? The poster featured featured a nude female painted by Jean Ingress, but wearing a gorilla mask, of course, and the fact that only 5% of the artists in the Met were female, but 85% of nude figures were women. The posters were updated in 1989, 1995, and 2012, but honestly not much has changed as of 2012, as it is down to 4% female artists shown and 73% nude. I'm 100% for equality, but I think a lot of the reason that women are used is because men's bodies are more utilitarian, you know what I mean? We evolved from needing to go out, club things over the head, and drag it back to the cave for food, you know what I'm saying? Plus the fur and whatnot. Mm-mm. Nah. Number eight is John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy is one of the worst serial killers in American history, having killed at least 33 boys and young men. After he was caught in 1978, the media nicknamed him the Killer Clown because he would actually dress up as his alter ego, Pogo the Clown, for birthday parties and parades. No wonder people are afraid of clowns. But I guess he missed the good old days because while on death row, he painted hundreds of pictures, including self-portraits dressed as Pogo. Who's got the paint? <laughs> As disturbing as it sounds, there's actually a market for murderer memorabilia and artwork. After he was executed in 1994, a bunch of his paintings were burnt in a bonfire that was attended by his victims' families. But in 2011, the Arts Factory in Las Vegas got a hold of 74 of Gacy's paintings and put on a show and sale of his work. The gallery planned to send the proceeds to a victim's charity, but the National Center for Victims of Crime said that they were glorifying Gacy and they didn't want any of the money. To be honest, I see both sides of the argument here. It's kind of a tough one. Kind of a juggling act, if you will. <laughs> Get it? He was, he was a clown. Moving on. Number seven is Chris Ophelia, the Holy Virgin Mary. 
Chris O'Feely was born in Manchester, England in 1968 and is known for his collages made up of layers of different materials, including elephant dung. What a crappy job. O'Feely used poo in his 1996 painting, The Holy Virgin Mary, which was part of the exhibition Sensation. The work is eight feet tall and six feet wide and is propped up on two balls of dung and depicts a black Virgin Mary in a style that was inspired by Ophelia's Nigerian heritage and his time spent in Zimbabwe. The image is made from his usual assortment of mixed media, including angels that are cut out from pornographic images and Mary's exposed breast made of dung. Oh my God, can this get weirder? The controversy started when it got to New York City and Mayor Rudy Giuliani called it sick and disrespectful to the Virgin Mary and the church. Attempts were made to damage the work and Giuliani even brought a lawsuit against the Brooklyn Museum and tried to withdraw their funding and have them evicted. Again, this one's kind of a tough one because artwork is supposed to be compelling and engaging, sometimes controversial, but poo on the Virgin Mary, no. That guy might be going to hell. Number six is Guillermo Vargas Exposition Number One. Guillermo Vargas was born in 1975 in San Jose, Costa Rica and uses a lot of different mediums in his work, from painting to live performance. His exhibition, Exposition Number no. 1, wasn't any different. But the exhibition caused international outrage when Vargas used a stray dog named Natividad in the show. While the gallery was open, Natividad was left without food or water and tied up underneath a sign made of dog biscuits that spelled out, Eres lo que lis, or You are what you eat. Over a million people signed a petition against him after there were claims that the dog starved to death. The gallery claimed that the dog was properly fed and was only tied up for a few hours before it escaped after the first day. Vargas pointed out that no one intervened to help the dog in the gallery and that they would have ignored the stray on the street. Again, this guy does make a good point. I'm very confused by a lot of these. These people are very good at arguing. I just feel bad for the dog. Number five is Orlan, the reincarnation of Saint Orlan. French artist Orlan was born in 1947 as Mirielle Port and is known for what she calls canal art. I can only imagine what this is going to be. Her work can sometimes be seen as bizarre performance art, but in The Reincarnation of Saint Orlan, she took the whole concept of putting herself into her work to, let's just say, a whole nother level. Orlan started the project in 1990 by undergoing a series of plastic surgeries. The goal of going under the knife was to transform into the ideal woman that had been depicted by male artists by literally sculpting her face to resemble the woman in famous paintings and sculptures. To really take part in the performance, she was dressed in specially made designer outfits and was awake during the surgeries and would listen to classical music. Is it just me or does something about this just scream Hannibal Lecter? Put on the classical music, ladies. <laughs> The surgeries were also filmed and broadcast to galleries in New York and Paris. By the end of all of the surgeries, Orlan's face was like a collage of features from Venus, Diana, Europa, Psyche, and Mona Lisa. Number four is Edouard Manet, Luncheon on the Grass. Impressionism is one of the most celebrated art movements in history, but that wasn't the case when it first showed up in Paris salons in the 1860s. The painting that caused some of the biggest upset was Edouard Manet's Luncheon on the Grass. Manet was known in the Paris art scene as a realist painter, and compared to some of the impressionist works that look more like a blur of colors, Luncheon sticks to a pretty realist style, but it wasn't his distorted proportions that caused the most drama. It was because he put a nude woman, presumably a prostitute, brightly lit and on full display in a park between two dapper, fully dressed men instead of hidden in a dark studio. When he submitted it to the Paris Salon in 1863, it was immediately rejected and when it was finally shown along with other impressionist artists, the public was completely shocked and spent most of their time laughing at it. This one I could see. I do understand why people laughed at it. Look at her face. She's like, you know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Number three is Marina Abramovic, Rhythm Zero. 
Marina Abramovic was born in 1946 in Belgrade, Yugoslavia and is known for engaging with audiences and putting herself in vulnerable situations. But in Rhythm Zero, she went from vulnerable to physical danger real quick. The six hour performance was put on in 1974 at the Studio Mora in Naples. The table was laid with 72 objects, including an apple, cake, lipstick, flowers, a feather, but as well as nails, a scalpel, a hammer, and a gun, as well as a single bullet. Ambramovic presented herself as an object and allowed the audience to interact with her or the objects however they wanted. It started innocent enough, but it didn't take long for visitors to cut off her clothes and started to cut her and even become sexually aggressive. But unbelievably, she stayed committed to the performance, even when one person loaded the gun and put it to her head. That's dedication to the art. I just, I would have been out at that point. Other members of the public intervened, but not before the darkest animal side of humanity was exposed. Number two is Damien Hirst, Natural History. Damien Hirst was born in 1965 in Bristol, England, and is one of the most successful members of the young British artist group of the 1990s. Hirst is known for using dead and live butterflies in his work, but it was his series Natural History that intended to create a zoo of dead animals that really pissed people off. The first work in 1992, The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, was a dead tiger shark suspended in formaldehyde. And you didn't think these could get weirder. You were wrong. Critics and animal rights groups argued that it wasn't art, but cruel and simple, relying on its shock value. Other works in the series had other dead animals in formaldehyde, like Mother and Child Divided, which was a cow and calf cut in half and displayed in separate vitrines. The works sold for millions unbelievably, but despite his fame and fortune, Hearst has been accused of plagiarism and even admitted to not creating his own stuff, leaving the actual work to many of his assistants. And number one is Michelangelo, The Last Judgment, The Sistine Chapel. Michelangelo was born in 1475 and is still considered one of the greatest master painters in history. But that doesn't mean he didn't cause any trouble back in the day. Michelangelo is best known for painting the Sistine Chapel in Vatican City. The most iconic of them is The Last Judgment, which he started in 1536, 25 years after he'd finished the rest of the chapel. The massive fresco has over 300 figures and covers the entire altar. When it was finally finished in 1541, there was almost immediate outcry from members of the church who thought it was obscene and disrespectful and put art before religion. That's because he not only included mythological figures, but they were all pretty much naked, even the saints, Jesus and Mary. Pope Paul III was a supporter of the arts and didn't really mind, but after Michelangelo died in 1564, all the nude bits were painted over. But it was eventually restored between 1980 and 1994. Well, I'm just glad we live in a time where we're not afraid of people's jiggly bits anymore. We're all just meat sacks, people. Nothing to be afraid of. Thank you guys so much for watching this. It feels really good to be back on camera once again. I appreciate all the feedback you guys gave me saying that you want me back in these videos. So I'm back. On the right, you'll find two of my most recent videos that you can press or click right now if you want to watch some more. And as always, I will see you back in the next video with my face and all. Have a great day, guys.